Hello, I'm Kath. My channel is Made by Kathcraft. Thank you very much for joining me for my latest video. So this video is a fabric haul video and I'm quite excited about filming this one because I haven't done a fabric haul video for quite a while now. I think the last one I did was at the beginning of January because I've done a bit of shopping in the Christmas and New Year sales. And then in January and February, I didn't really buy much fabric. I was really good. Um, but in March, in the last couple of weeks, I've seen some really lovely fabrics coming through over on Instagram that have really tempted me. And I had a bit of birthday money left over from January as well. So that birthday money is now spent. And in return, I have a lovely pile of fabrics here that I'm really looking forward to sharing with you. Um, so I'm going to talk through each fabric and my plans for each one. I've got a pattern pairing for each one, I think. Yeah, I think I have plans for every fabric that I've bought. And I've also got a couple of new patterns I've purchased over the last couple of weeks that I'm going to share with you too. So it's a bit of a mix here. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to talking them all through. But as ever, I'll start the video off with what I'm wearing today. And today I've got a really handmade outfit on, actually. I've got a handmade top, a handmade vest and a handmade skirt on. So I'll start off by talking about the top. You may well recognise this top as one of my favourite patterns for sort of wintry, cooler weather. It is the Freya top by Tilling the Buttons and it comes from their book Stretch. It's my favourite pattern from that book. I've got quite a few Freyas, both in the top version and the dress version, because it also comes as a sort of A-line jersey dress. So the version I'm wearing today is the classic Freya with the mock neckline. And I love this Freya. I've worn this one quite a lot because it's made in a really lovely fabric. I'll hold up a bit close so you can see. This fabric is a ribbed tensile jersey fabric by Meat Milk. And I got this from Minerva. I think I made this last winter, but they still stock this fabric range in quite a few different very yummy colours. Um, and it's just a really lovely fabric to wear. It's quite a lovely drapey soft jersey fabric with a bit of a sheen to it. It's really comfy and soft to wear. I've washed this one quite a few times and I found it's worn really well and its recovery seems really good. I do wash it on like a gentle sort of 30 degree wash because I'm mindful that te tensile is a delicate fabric. But yeah, I found it's held up really well to washing and wearing. And the colourway I'm wearing today, it looks a bit sort of more white on screen than it actually is in real life. It's a bit more creamy in real life. I think the colourway is called Shell. I will link it down below. And um, I've also bought the berry colourway of this fabric because I really love it and I find it a really nice comfy one to wear. So that's what I'm wearing underneath, a Freya top. And I always make a size two in the Freya top, which is pretty much bang on my measurements. But I thought I'd mention actually, because I often get people saying they really like the look of the Freya top, but it hasn't got the biggest size range ever. Another great alternative to the Freya top, if you're looking for this sort of close fit jersey top with this style of neckline, is the Nico top by True Bias. Um, it's very similar in terms of the top version. There's a different dress option that's quite different to the Freya dress. It's sort of longer and straighter with a slit at the sides, I think. Um, but it has a bigger range um, of sizing. So if you want kind of like a basic winter jersey top um, in a wider size range, then the Nico top is also a really good one. But yeah, anyway, that's the top I'm wearing underneath. And then over the top, I've got on a vest that I knitted last year. And this one I knitted using a kit from We Are Knitters, and it's called the Saturday Top. It's a really cute vest top, I think. Um, it was quite a quick knit, um, because obviously you're just making a front and back and no sleeves or anything. It was my first summer knit I think I tried, and it's knitted up in their Pima cotton yarn, which I find is a really nice yarn. Um, oh yeah, really nice to knit with. And as you can see, it's quite a cute little knit top. It's got these little sort of fine straps that are made using an I-cord and then this deep V at the front. At the back, it's got a straight back with a bit of ribbing there to kind of hold its shape there. And it's got this pretty sort of lacy detail all over it. I'll stand up a bit so you can see. And I think um, wearing on top of the um, white frayer top or the kind of creamy frayer top shows off that little lacy detail, which I quite like. And I'm really making a big effort this year to try and get out my knitted garments and wear them because 
I do find with what garments I sew, I generally like to wear them straight away and enjoy them. But with my knitted garments, just because they take a bit longer to do, I often finish them and then sort of put them away and want to keep them nice for a while. And I don't end up wearing them that much. So this year, I'm really making a big effort to get them out. And it's quite nice, actually, because it's a bit of a cool day today. And this little extra layer is keeping my body nice and warm over the frayer top because it's quite a lightweight jersey, this one. It's not the thickest, coziest jersey fabric. So... Yeah, the vest is um, adding a nice layer for me um, on top. But I'll link the Saturday top kit down below. It's a really nice one. And then I'm also wearing a handmade skirt, like I mentioned. I'll stand up a bit so you can see it. It's hard to see the whole thing, so it's quite a long one. But I made it using a free skirt pattern, which I really, really like, which is this pattern here. It's the Sabina skirt by the little pomegranate. I'll link the pattern down below. It's quite easy to get hold of. I'll, I'll link it down below and you basically need to put your email address into the Little Pomegranate's website to subscribe to the newsletter and then you get emailed the Sabina skirt files. But it's a really lovely pattern and perfect for beginners as well because the pattern is written in loads of details that so really hold you hold your hand through the whole sewing process this one. It was a really nice one to sew. It's a cute sort of midi length skirt with an elasticated waist it's got little pockets at the top, which you sew into the waistline. Um, and I find that always works really well when you're sewing with like a sort of lightweight fabric, like a viscose, like I've got my skirt in. Because it means the pockets don't sort of sag and hang down at the sides. Um, they kind of hold their, hold their shape better. And it's got this lovely little sort of ruffle at the bottom, which adds a really nice detail. So yeah, it's a really nice sew, the Sabina skirt. I find it comes together really nicely. And I make the straight size eight for this pattern which um, if I look at the measurements, is bang on my um, waist and hip measurement. But I think the Sabina skirt is quite a forgiving one to fit. Um, if you go based on your hip measurement, then you can pretty much adjust the elastic around the waist to fit you nicely and it'll just gather in accordingly. Um, and the version I'm wearing today of the Sabina skirt is my winter Sabina skirt, which I made in a viscose chalet fabric from Minerva. It's a really nice viscose chalet, this one. I think it's still in stock, so I'll link it down below. Um, I'll stand up a bit so you can see the print in a bit more detail. So it's got a black base with a sort of white floral print on and I find that kind of black and white um, print works really well for styling the different things for my winter wardrobe. And what I like about this viscose chalet fabric is it's quite substantial so it's not a super lightweight viscose so it's opaque and I think that works really well for quite a cosy winter skirt. So even though it's in quite a lightweight fabric, it feels quite nice and cosy. But it's still got that lovely drape and swish of viscose, which I think works really well for this Sabina skirt. And I think I might have lengthened this version by an inch or so, just to bring it a little bit close to my ankles, just for a cosy sort of winter look. Um, but I'll put a picture up so you can see my outfit all together. I'm really enjoying this outfit today. I'm glad that I'm actually reaching for my knitted items. I'm really enjoying wearing this one. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. So that was quite a long introduction to what I'm wearing today, just because I happen to be wearing quite a few handmade items today. But I'll move on now to sharing with you my new fabrics. So the first fabric I've got to share came from First for Fabrics. I saw this one pop up on one of the Instagram posts and it was a fabric that I've been thinking about in my head that I'd quite like to buy and sew with for quite a while. I already knew what I wanted to make. And it's one of their cotton jerseys and here it is. It is a yarn dyed um, cotton jersey with this lovely sort of Breton stripe on it. So because it's yarn dyed, you can see um, both sides have the stripe. It's not printed on, which I really like. Um, so yeah, hopefully it will last really nicely. And it comes in quite a few colourways. If you look on the First of Fabrics website, which I'll link below, I think there's um, they're sort of generally they come with this sort of creamy white base. And then there's, I think, a mustard stripe and a lilac stripe and a red stripe. So I was kind of spoilt for choice on which colourway to choose. But in the end, I decided on a classic navy and white stripe. So this is the fabric. Um, I also ordered some matching ribbing when I bought this fabric. And here is the matching ribbing. It's like a tubular ribbing. And I'm planning on using that for the neckband um, of the garment I'd like to make. And what was really lovely actually is I put my order in from First for Fabrics and then I got a call from the store. It was actually a call from Tamlin, who is sewn on the Tyne, who I'm sure you'll know. It was really lovely and a bit surreal to speak to her on the phone, actually. But she very kindly phoned and said that she'd been putting my order together 
and I'd ordered white ribbing fabric to go with this um, stripy jersey fabric but she said in real life and um, the fabric the white the white and the fabric was quite a sort of creamy or sort of soft white and she said that the ribbing they had in white was a bit more of a harsher white and she recommended instead their ecru ribbing which is a little bit softer and she thought would match better with the white in this jersey so she asked if i wanted to switch and get the ecru jersey and ribbing delivered instead of the white so i was really grateful for that call actually because it is really hard to see colors online sometimes and actually this um, ribbing that's arrived, which is the Ecru colourway, is a perfect match for the um, white here. As you can see, I think anything that was brighter than this would have been too stark against this white. So thank you so much, Tamlin and First of Fabrics, for that wonderful service. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, because I think those little details can make all the difference on a garment. So yeah, that's great service from First of Fabrics. I'll link both the jersey fabric and the ribbing too. So I'm really looking forward to sewing these ones up. And what I'd like to make is a kind of oversized relaxed fit t-shirt because I've been reaching for my oversized relaxed fit t-shirts quite a lot recently. I find they're something that I wear a lot, particularly if I'm wanting a comfy weekend outfit or in the summer too, um, if I'm just wanting something loose and breezy to wear. And I've been wanting to make a stripy one for quite a while, so I'm looking forward to, yeah, sewing that up. And the pattern I'd like to use for my oversized relaxed fit t-shirt is one of my favourites, it was one of my favourite t-shirt patterns. And it's this pattern here, which is the Solar Sweater and Tea Pattern by Paper Cut Patterns. I'll show you the line drawings. It's quite a boxy fit t-shirt and sweater pattern with a dropped shoulder, a round neck. And you can add on this lovely little detail, this little um, ruffle that you kind of sew into the seam here. And which is a really lovely detail. And I've made a few versions that have ruffles. But I love this pattern just without the ruffle as a very simple basic t-shirt too. And that's why I'm planning for this stripy jersey. So it should be quite a straightforward, simple make. I'll just have to spend a bit of time making sure I get the stripe matching all sorted because they're quite fine stripes. So quite a few stripes to make sure I match as I sort of cut and sew. Um, but yeah, it'll just be a really nice basic for my wardrobe. And I really like these colours. Um, I feel they're a bit nautical and they work all year round, either with shorts in the summer or a pair of jeans in the winter. So yeah, it should be a nice little make this one. I'll link the pattern and fabric below. So the next fabric that I've got to share is a French terry fabric. And this one came from Moonbow Fabrics. They are an online fabric shop that I think I first came across about a year or so ago. When I was searching online, um, I wanted to get some royal blue coloured French terry to turn into joggers for my children's PE kit. And I came across Moonbow Fabrics and I found that their French terry was really reasonably priced and um, I found it's washed and worn really well. So I knew I wanted some more French terry. So I went back on the website and had a look at what colours they had in stock and they had sort of the right kind of colours that I was looking for. So I snapped some up. So here is the French terry fabric I bought in this really lovely lilac colour, which I think is a really pretty colour. And um, yeah, it's really nice quality French terry. I'll link the fabric down below. They have quite a few different colours of solid French terry. They also have lots of fun sort of children's um, jersey and French terry prints as well. And what I'd like to make out of this fabric is a new pair of joggers for my daughter um, using the mini Hudson pants pattern by True Buyers, which I find um, fits my daughter and my son really well. And they find those joggers really comfy to wear. And I feel like I'm always making my son new joggers because he goes through them really quickly. He wears them all the time and he wears them quite hard. But I made my daughter a couple of pairs about maybe just over two years ago. And she is a bit of a lighter wearer of them. And I guess she doesn't always wear them. She'll often wear a dress instead. Um, so they've worn really well, but they're now starting to get a bit short and they're turning into kind of ankle swingers on her. So I needed to make her a couple of new pairs. Um, so what I'm planning to do is I'm planning to use this lilac French terry um, and I'm going to sort of make it a little bit more pretty or jazz it up a little bit by using some scraps that I have from my fabric remnants for the cuffs and the pocket detail and I'll sort of show you what I mean so I've got a pair I made for my daughter a couple of years ago one of the pairs that's unfortunately getting too small but I use those details here so here is the old one of the old pairs I made her I think this actually this pair actually came about because I'd ordered this fabric think it was going to be a royal blue originally for some PE joggers from a different um, company, not Moonbow. I can't remember where it came from. And um, it turned up and it was a, not the right colour. Um, so yeah, I ended up turning them into a pair of little joggers that my daughter could wear out of school. 
and then I use this um, French terry fabric that I'd originally used for sew over it molly dress for me for the waistband and the pocket detail and little cuffs on the bottom and I thought they turned out really cute actually and she loves that they're a bit different and have this little trim on them but yeah they're definitely getting too small so I had to look through my remnant suitcase to see what fabrics I had left over that might go really nicely with the lilac so I could add a similar detail and I found a couple of choices and my daughter chose this fabric here which is another really cute French terry fabric. I think this one originally came from Lily and Mimi fabric shop and I originally used this to make a little dress for my niece when she was quite small um, which is quite cute but I had a decent amount left over because my the dress was so small it didn't need that much fabric so that is the fabric my daughter chose to be added as trim to the lilac joggers and I think that'll look really cute actually so I'm going to use this fabric for the waistband the little pocket detail and the cuff and hopefully that's turned into a really nice pair of joggers for her um, I also got some hot pink French terry along with this lilac French terry but I've already cut that pair out so I'll share that joggers pair um, in a future makes video but yeah that should be a nice quick little sew and nice to have a couple more pairs for my daughter that fit her a little bit better and um, she's got loads of wear out of those old ones so I'm a bit sad to see them go but um yeah they'd be much loved so that's good so the next few fabrics I've got to share um, all came from Fabric Godmother. I got a bit of a haul from Fabric Godmother that arrived this week. I'm really happy with all the fabrics actually. I'm looking forward to sewing with all of them. And the first fabric that I got from Fabric Godmother is a cotton lawn fabric that's one of their own prints. And it, I think it's called their Pesca Floral Cotton Lawn. And it's one of their newer prints. And I think they generally take um, prints from um, vintage pattern archives and then sort of bring them back to life um, and this is such a lovely one I just couldn't resist it so here is it so it's a cotton lawn fabric I'll link it down below I think they're still um, in stock I think a few different places I've seen are selling this um, fabric but it's a really lovely silky lightweight cotton lawn um, I've sewn with one of the fabric godmother fat cotton lawns before and I knew what lovely quality they were and this one is just the same and I just love the colour of this fabric. It's such a pretty blue, I think, and um, made even prettier by these little pops of sort of peachy pink um, with the floral prints on here. I just thought it was a bit different. I haven't seen a lot of fabrics in this shade of blue. Um, so yeah, I got, I think, two metres of this fabric and I'm really looking forward to sewing it up. And what I'm planning to make with this fabric is a shirt dress, I think. I'm um, using a pattern from this book here, which is Breaking the Pattern by Named Clothing. Um, and I'm making a pattern I've made once before last year that I really enjoyed sewing and I've really enjoyed wearing. So I was quite keen to make it again. And when I saw this fabric, I immediately thought that would be really lovely for that pattern. And I think it'll make a really nice shirt dress actually, because it's such soft, silky cotton lawn. It won't feel too stiff. It'll be really nice and comfy to wear in hotter weather, I think. The pattern is um, this one here. It is the Sarast shirt dress, which is a really lovely shirt dress with some really interesting details to it, I think. So it's got kind of a classic shirt top with a lovely yoke detail at the back and a proper sort of stand up collar, I think, from memory, and then short sleeves. And it's got a gathered skirt. But what's quite interesting about the pattern is this panelling at the front. So the button plackets and front panel isn't gathered, it's flat at the front, which I think is a really pretty detail. And then it's got darts at the back, um, just to give a really nice shape to the whole shirt, um, sort of bodice area. And I found when I made this one, it just seemed to fit me quite well in terms of, you know, um, where the shoulder seam fell and how the um, sleeves fit. It didn't feel too tight across the shoulders or anything. Yeah, it just felt like quite a nice fit on me without having to make any tweaks, which is always nice for a pattern. Oh, and I forgot to show you a lovely little detail on this pattern, actually, is this little um, sort of pleated or ruffly detail on the front of the collar. And I had a little ruffle on the end of the sleeves in my first version as well to kind of mirror that little ruffle detail on the collar. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to sewing that one up. Um, it probably isn't going to go to the top of my list because it's going to be more of a summary make. Um, but yeah, I'll take my time over that one, I think. Oh, and I mentioned the sizing of the um, Saras shirt dress, just in case you're interested. It goes from a UK 6 up to UK 22. The largest size is for a bust of 45 and 3 quarter inches. So the next fabric that I got in my mini Fabric Godmother fabric haul is another um, fabric that comes from the Fabric Godmother collections, one of their own prints. But whereas the Pesca Cotton Lawn fabric I just showed you is one of their newer 
prints. I know this one has been around for a while because I've been admiring it for quite a while. It's one of those fabrics I've seen people make various garments in and I've always thought what a lovely fabric. But I wasn't sure if I got it myself what I'd make so I held off buying it because I generally like to have a bit of an idea of what I want to sew or a particular pattern um, before I buy a fabric. And then I saw um, Lauren from Guthrie Garney um, wearing a top she'd made using this fabric and I thought it was a perfect fabric and pattern pairing and it really inspired me. I thought I'd really like to recreate that and have that in my wardrobe too. So this is very much completely inspired by Lauren at Guthrie Garney. And this is the fabric. It is so pretty. It is called um, the Joni Floral Stripe Fabric. You've probably seen it. I think it's quite a standout print. Um, so yeah, it's a beautiful fabric with this lovely stripe pattern going across it. Um, yeah, horizontally across it. So yeah, that's the selvage at the end here. Um, and you can get this fabric in different colourways. I think there might be a navy and then a pink and then this sort of creamy base. And it comes on different um, cloths too. So I've got the viscose lawn. You can see it's lovely and drapey. It's still folded up so you can't see the full drape because it's kind of slightly thicker, but it's really lovely and silky and drapey. I'll just, so you can see it's lovely and lightweight. Um, but you can also get this, I think, as a cotton lawn and possibly I might have seen like a crepe version too, although I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, so it definitely comes on different ba bases. But yeah, I really had my eye on the viscose version. I really wanted to make a lovely floaty top inspired by Lauren's. So the pattern I'm going to use for this fabric is um, a fibre mood pattern. And it's this one here, it is their Tanita top. Um, so it's one I hadn't actually come across before until I saw Lauren's version. But as you can see, it's kind of a quite a relaxed fit top with a sort of boat neck. And then it's got elastic on the sleeve cuffs and also elastic at the bottom. And you pretty much cut it as one front piece and one back piece. So what I loved about the top is how it really showed off the sort of full stripe of the Joni fabrics. So it can go right across the fabric and down the sleeves too. I thought it was a really effective way to show off the print. See, I got this pattern from the fold line. Um, I got the PDF version, which just was e really easy to download when I purchased it on the fold line website. And the nice thing about buying the PDF of this means that the pattern files I downloaded came with seam allowances included, which you don't get if you get the Fibre Mood magazine. And before, the only Fibre Mood patterns I've made are ones that came when I bought the magazine. So I've had to yeah, add all the seam allowances on, which is okay because they do show you how to do it, but it just makes the whole process um, a bit more sort of um, time consuming, I guess. But this was nice. Um, it came with a PDF pattern um, file attached with the layers and I've got it all printed out now and traced off. Um, I need to wash this fabric now and get it cut out. But again, I'm not in a huge rush to do it because it's definitely going to be a summery top because this fabric is so lightweight. Um, it'll definitely be one I'll be reaching for in summer. And I think the print is just so summery too, isn't it? With these lovely um sort of um lovely flowers on it so yeah I'm really looking forward to giving this pattern a go I think it's designed to be quite oversized um, I like the neckline that is finished with bias binding because that's my preferred finish so hopefully it'll sew up nicely um I think I ordered 1.5 meters of this fabric I think the top says if you've got wider fab a wider fabric which is this the wider fabric like 100 and, I don't know what the width is but 140 150 centimeters wide you need it was at 1.2 or 1.3 meters but I thought it would be nice to have a little bit extra just because then I can make sure that I cut it with the pattern exactly where I want it to be because it's quite a large pattern repeat as you can see because the stripes are so wide so yeah I'm really looking forward to sewing with this one I'm glad to finally have some of this fabric because it is one that I've been admiring for absolutely ages <laughs> So I've got three more fabrics to share with you that also all came in my fabric godmother fabric haul and I thought I'd share these ones all together because they're all in the same category of fabrics and these are very summery ones because they are all swimwear fabrics. When I was browsing the fabric godmother website and I'd already got the um, two fabric godmother prints in my basket I thought I'd have a look on the website and I saw that fabric godmother are currently stocking loads of liberty print swimwear fabrics um, and I've been wanting to make a bit more swimwear for this year because we're going on holiday hopefully somewhere sunny this summer and um, where we'll be by the pool a lot so I thought it'd be nice to have a few different swimming costumes or bikinis to be able to wear and a couple of my older bikinis are now getting quite well worn um, so yeah it'd be nice to have a couple of new ones 
So I've got three different swimwear fabrics. They're all Liberty fabrics, which I guess Liberty fabrics are on the pricey side, but I find for swimwear you don't need a great deal of fabric, so it doesn't end up too expensive. So I got one that's a print and then two planes. And this is my print first, which I thought was a really cute print. Um, and actually I've been wanting to sort of get a sort of ditzy floral swim print for ages. So this was just perfect and right up my street. So I've just got half a metre of it because I'm planning to use it for the outer pieces of what I make. And then I've got a lining fabric as well. And what I really like about these Liberty swimwear fabrics, I've made something in one before, is they have quite a nice firm sort of elasticity to them so I find they kind of hold their shape really nicely which you need for um, swimming fabrics and also what I write, really like about the Liberty swim fabrics is and I'll just look at the computer so I use the right words they have chlorinated pool watercolour fastness which I think is really good because I've definitely sewn with a couple of swimwear fabrics that I bought when I first started sewing swimwear and I opted for cheaper fabrics just because I was quite nervous about sewing swimmer and I wasn't sure how it was going to go so I didn't want to buy anything too expensive and I found the colours in those swimmer fabrics have really faded a lot um, through exposure to chlorine so it's nice to know these fabrics will hopefully last a bit better. So yeah this is the print I went for this lovely sort of blue base with these cute little ditzy florals in reds and oranges and pinks and whites and then to go with that I bought um, I think half a metre of this navy colourway of the Liberty Swim fabric so I think that'll be quite nice as a lining fabric for the Ditsy floral and then I bought a metre of plain black um, swim fabric again it's a Liberty fabric and I think they're all 80% polymedes and 20% elastane um, it's got yes yeah, so again it's nice and I've got a nice sort of firm stretch to it again and I just quite like to make a plain black swimsuit or bikini because I haven't got one like that I've got quite a few in fun prints which are lovely but I thought you can't go wrong with a black one that'll hopefully last for ages and just be a real classic so yeah I'm looking forward to sewing with those well I say I'm looking forward to it so when my isn't always my favorite thing to sew but I think once I get into it I always enjoy it a bit more than I expected and I also found on the Fabric Godmother website what they also had which I really appreciated is they had um, swimwear elastic too so I bought some of that in the six millimeter width so it's the kind of rubber elastic that um um, I think it works really well because I think if you sew with um, sort of standard woven elastic it can kind of perish a bit faster because it's not designed to be exposed to chlorine. That's my understanding. So I've always used this rubber elastic and I found it's worked really well and lasted certainly longer than some of the swim fabrics have. So I've got a little bag of that ready to use on my um, swimming um, fabric and I'm not sure what patterns I'm going to use for this fabric yet. I've got a few patterns swimmer patterns that I've bought already that I've used um, over the last couple of years since I've been sewing swimmer. The first one I started on was the Megan Nielsen Cottesloe, which you can make as a kind of classic swimming costume or a bikini. And there's a couple of options there, like a high waist, um, high waist bottoms or sort of low rise bottoms, and then a top with a little band underneath or without the band. So it's a quite nice basic one. I've also got, this is maybe my favourite, the Friday Pattern Company Vanessa two piece, um, which has a kind of bottom that is, it's not that high waisted. I've often made it a little bit higher actually, which is my preference. But it's got this lovely top with this tie at the front, and it's a fully lined top, so that turns out really nicely. Um, I've made a few bikinis with this little tie front top, and I find it it provides a quite a nice amount of coverage, but it feels pretty too. So that is another option, and I've also got this one, which is kind of like a fancy. Um, swimming costume I think the opium um so the Pilates swimsuit by opium um and it's this has a sort of more extravagant tie at the front than the Vanessa I guess it's a little bit more of a feature with a larger bow and this lovely cut out detail on the back and this is a swimming costume rather than a bikini and I've made that one and I love that one too so those are three options I already have in my pattern stash but I think I'm going to have a look for a potential new pattern too because I think it might be fun to try something new so maybe I'll use one of the patterns I already know and I'm fairly comfortable with for one option of the fabric, either the floral or the black, and then maybe choose a new pattern for the other one, um, just for a bit of interest. Um, so I might have a little browse online to see what I can find. But yeah, as, again, I've got a bit of time um, before I need to worry about getting these sewn up, because as long as I get them sewn up before the school holidays and we go on holiday, I should be fine. So but it was just nice to find some nice quality swim fabrics. And like I said, you don't really need too much. So it didn't feel too naughty buying some Liberty prints. So 
yeah that is my final fabric godmother fabric so those are all of the new fabrics that have arrived with me over the last week or two and then i've also got one more new pattern to share that i also bought this month and this pattern is one that i've been eyeing up for quite a while i remember admiring it when it first came out and i had a look online actually to find out when it was first released because i maybe thought the summer before last it was actually released in august 2020 so it's been around for a while now so i'm glad to finally have it and i'm really looking forward to giving it a go and it's another quite summery pattern i guess it is this one here it is the elegy wrap dress by closet court patterns so yeah it's just a really pretty wrap dress uh, when i saw it come out i thought i'd really love to sew it if i had an occasion maybe because i thought it'd be perfect to wear maybe if you're going to a wedding or something like that and i haven't had such an occasion but I was actually thinking ahead to my summer holidays and I thought actually if I made the short sleeve version here in a longer length it might be a really lovely relaxed dress to wear um, out on evening to dinner so I thought I'll get it and I'll just give it a go um, and it'll hopefully be a lot of fun. I really enjoy closet core patterns, I always think they have really nice details and I find their instructions really nice to follow too. So I'll show you the line drawings. So it's a wrap dress with a sort of grown on sleeve that you can either make as a short length or sort of longer, more billowy length. Then it's got a waistband and a tie at the middle to kind of bring it in, optional patch pockets. And you can make it in three different lengths, a sort of mini skirt, which I think is kind of above the knee, or a midi or a maxi skirt. And it's a really lovely dress. And I think it could be really dressy with a pair of heels in a beautiful floral fabric, like I mentioned for wedding. But I'm gonna make a slightly more relaxed version um, to be able to wear as a summery dress with a pair of flip flops. That's my plan. Um, in terms of sizing, it's got a really good size range. I've got the paper pattern, I do love a paper pattern, um, which comes in size 0 up to size 20, but you can also get it in PDF format in a size US 14 up to 32. So yeah, very size inclusive pattern. And it's got some lovely details, it's got these little pleats at the front, and I think you've got little sort of um, pleats at the back too. I think the bow looks like a really pretty shape, a nice swishy skirt, so... Yeah, I'm really looking forward to giving this a go. I'm going to have a look in my fabric stash to see if I have any um, viscose fabrics large enough to make it, because I think it would work really well in a nice lightweight viscose chalet type fabric. And that is hopefully my plan. I think I might have some from memory from Rainbow Fabrics that might work really well. So I'm going to have a look for that. So this is one I'd like to get going on sooner rather than later actually just because I'm really looking forward to giving it a try so hopefully I'll be able to update you on progress and how I get on with this one in a future video fingers crossed um I've got some fabric that does work that I think I have got some I just need to go and have a proper look so yeah the LED wrap dress I'm glad to have this in my pattern collection I do love closet core patterns and I've seen some beautiful versions of this one so I'm looking forward to giving it a try and see how it fits me because I don't always like a wrap dress but I think this is a really pretty one so I'm hoping it all um yeah turn out nicely so those are all of the fabrics and patterns i've got to share in this video so i hope you've enjoyed hearing me chat about all of those and my plans for each of the different fabrics i'm really looking forward to getting started on some of those projects as you can probably see um for me having chatted them all through this whole video has quite a spring summer vibe to it um i've just had enough of the cold weather and i'm really looking forward to sewing for some warmer weather and planning those pattern and fabric combinations has definitely got me in a good mood and got me yeah looking forward to some summer sunshine so if you've enjoyed this video then please do give it a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel then thank you very much for dropping by please do subscribe and also press the bell icon so you'll be notified when I bring my future videos out and hopefully in future videos I'll be able to share with you how I'm getting on with all of those new projects. So thank you very much for watching and um, I hope you've got some lovely sewing plans in the pipeline too. I hope you have a lovely day and I'll hopefully see you again soon for another video. Bye!